Viking raids on the British Isles are well documented, yet Viking voyages to North America are rarely discussed. The main Norse settlement in North America was known as Vinland to the Vikings. Vinland is probably Lancel Meadows in Newfoundland, which is an island just east of mainland Canada. A study published just last year in Nature found that the Vikings were definitely in Newfoundland in 1021 AD. Forget Christopher Columbus, hundreds of years later, in the 15th century. The Vikings were in North America, hundreds of years prior to this. The only confirmed Norse settlement in the Americas is Lansom Meadows, in Newfoundland. The site is home to eight buildings, um, constructed by a wooden frame with turf covered over the top, in the Norse tradition. And over 800 Norse artefacts have been found at this site. It is thought that Lansom Meadows, which we think essentially is Vinland, as described in the ancient sagas, um, was a base of operations for the Vikings, um, which included a, a ship repair station um, for, for obvious reasons, but it was also a base for the Vikings to explore other parts of the Americas, further south, uh, and other parts of probably the eastern coast of Canada. Although we have still to find exact proof, it's highly likely that the Vikings explored far beyond Newfoundland. It wasn't until the 1960s that Lance Meadows was uncovered um, by a couple from Norway, Helg Instad and Anne Ingstad, an archaeologist. They found real evidence to support the tales told in the Icelandic sagas. Leif Erikson is considered to be the first European to set foot in the Americas, and the first Norse explorer um, to reach Newfoundland, um, Lance Meadows, um, or established the Viking settlement of Vinland, as they called. It, um, which I think actually was a reference to potentially wine. Leif Erikson uh, would be well known to Interpol fans, um, as that's one of the songs that me and my friends used to listen to um, when we were growing up. Although we have evidence that the Vikings settled in Newfoundland um, in 1021 AD, Leif Erikson was probably earlier than that, um, maybe a decade or two earlier than that, um, given that Leif Erikson died around the 1020s, um, I think 1025 at the latest, um, there is a wee bit of debate about exactly when he died, but it probably was slightly before um, this 1021 date. Leif Erikson himself uh, was the son of Eric the Red. Um, one of the Viking um, Icelandic sagas is actually named Eric the Red, um, that gives us some insight um, into the, the Viking expeditions in the Americas. But Eric the Red, originally from Norway, was known as the first Norse explorer to settle Greenland. Tales of Leif Erikson's voyages to North America are found in old Icelandic sagas, um, along with numerous other Viking Norse expeditions to the Americas. There are two main Icelandic sagas that contain details um, of Viking Norse trips to North America. One is the saga of the Greenlanders, and the other is the saga of Eric the Red, which is Leif Erikson's father, both of which are written a few hundred years after the events, um, and it can be difficult to separate myth from fact in these sagas. The sagas tell us that Icelanders settled Greenland in the 10th century, and that most voyages to North America sailed from Greenland. Geographically, this makes a lot of sense. Obviously, Greenland's proximity to the eastern coast of Canada um, is very close, so it wouldn't have been too much of a distance for Vikings to travel, compared to, say, Vikings from Norway having to reach all across the North Atlantic um, to the east coast of Canada. Greenland was a good stepping stone for the Vikings to reach North America. The sagas tell us of numerous Norse expeditions to North America. One tale is of a Viking trader, Thor Carol Sefney, who led three ships of Norse from Greenland to Vinland. Thorfinn and his wife Gudrid were potentially the first Europeans to have a child in North America, called Snorri. After three years in Vinland, Thorfinn, his family and the surviving crew sailed from Vinland back to Europe, settling in Iceland. Some sources suggest that they may have left in a hurry, in a hail of arrows from the natives. The Norse word for the natives 
traitors was Skraling, which can be translated as meaning wretched people, but there is various translations for this. It seems the Norse used this word to describe the Thule people, or the Proto-Inuit group, who they coexisted with in Greenland. In modern Icelandic, Skrælingi means barbarian, whereas the Danish descendant Skræling means weakling, all derived from the same Old Norse word Skræling. Regardless of the exact translation, the meaning is clear. The Vikings saw the native people as the others, and the native peoples of Canada saw the Vikings as foreign colonizers here to take their land and cause havoc in their region. There is tales in the sagas of Vikings killing native people, and native people retaliating with full force. There's a whole lot more to delve into on this subject, but I'll leave that for a future video. The full extent of the Viking presence in North America is still to be fully realised and fully discovered. I'm sure many artefacts are buried under the soil. What's your thoughts and what other articles or, or studies can you find um, on, on the connection between the Vikings and North America, the presence of the Vikings in North America? Please let me know in the comments below. Speaking of the Vikings, what did Vikings look like and what was their genetic history? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell and tell your friends and family about this channel. Please also support this work um, through the links in the description below, through Patreon, PayPal and buymeacoffee.com. All your support is greatly appreciated, so thank you. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.